turkey tail mushroom. How to identify, grow, harvest, dry, store, grind, prepare, use, and eat this amazing, extremely healthy mushroom. Good afternoon and welcome to Willow's Green Permaculture. Today, I'd like to talk to you about turkey tail mushrooms. How you can actually grow them yourself, how you identify them, how you harvest them, how you dry them indoors without losing their properties, and how to prepare them as well, how you, how you can eat them and how you can prepare them for eating. If that's something you're interested in, then let's get started. So we're uh, sitting here in, in, in our fire pit and we've got some turkey tail right here. I've got a lot better examples of turkey tail, but I'll show you what we have here right now. So here's one piece. These are old, but here's a piece. You can see the, the all the colors there. It's like almost velvety, almost like felt or something like that is how it feels. It's really nice. The back should be completely white, but these are old now, so they've 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 gone they've gone to off white to a beige color. But you can see their little round pores there. We got uh, we got a log right here with lots of turkey tail on it bunch of turkey tail right there can't hold this for too long this is also old it's not white underneath but you can see all those colors on top the first thing i wanted to talk to you about was how you can actually grow your own turkey tail turkey tail as you can see grows out of dead wood like these logs right here that we're using for chairs around our fire pit they they grow out of dead hardwoods mostly and so if you ever have to cut a dead tree down, of course you can use that for firewood or if you're a carpenter and it's nice wood that you can use for carpentry, of course that's great too. Or of course a lot of people will use uh, their dead wood to make, they make wood chips out of them. But another thing you can use your dead wood for, and this, and this is the best part about uh, permaculture, when you've got something available in your environment that you can use, you want to get multiple uses out of it and you want to use it in place as much as possible. You want to move it as little as possible. Keep it in place as much as possible. You got logs here. Well, there are several uses that we can use with these logs all at once. The logs are going to contribute to soil building. That's why you don't necessarily want to remove them from where you got them from, from where the tree died. You want to leave them there. Now, if you got a garden close by, then you could put them by the garden and those logs are not only going to contribute to the soil building around your, your garden, but they're going to provide habitat for frogs and toads and uh, solitary bees. So the frogs and the toads are going to help you in the garden, but they're going to help you control your bugs in the garden and the solitary bees and other insects that are going to use them as an insect hotel. They're going to be your pollinators for you. Uh, so that's there's the one use now of course the other use you're going to get well here for instance where you know this is this is seating around a fire pit so that's the second use third use here well if they're hardwoods and uh, you're going to get some different kinds of fungus growing on it and here well we've got some turkey tail growing on it and so there is one way you can grow your own turkey tail is by simply leaving logs lying around in different spots for different purposes and whatever you're using those logs for eventually you'll you may get some turkey tail so let's talk identification how you how you identify your turkey tail is you've got on the top of it you've got multiple colors multiple lines concentric lines with colors on the very top and then usually the the last outer edge 
concentric, let's say, circle around the, the, the outer edge of your turkey tail, it's going to be white or just not as dark as everything else, maybe a beige. And then the very, very outer edge, it's not going to be even. It's going to be like there are little cuts in the edge, little dents and wedges in the edge of your mushroom. It's not going to be a smooth curve. And of course, the top is going to feel velvety. It's going to feel almost like it's got little tiny hairs or something, velvety or like felt or something like that. Very soft on the colorful part. Now underneath, if they're fresh anyways, it should be completely white. You may need glasses for this or a magnifying glass, but you should be able to see little tiny round circles on that white surface. And those are your pores because mushrooms underneath it could look in many different ways. For example, you could have gills, you could have bungee type substance, and then you could have pores. And turkey tail has pores. If you got on the top, you got the concentric colors, the jagged edges, less color on the very outside here, but lots of intense different colors from the center right out to the outside. And then on the underside, you got it's all white and it's got little round pores. Then what you've got is turkey tail. The very uneven ridges along the edges, very distinct colors along the top, very velvety feel. And now let's have a look at the underneath. Pull one off. Oh. <laughs> well, a little bit aged. Still smooth though, not so young. I can see the little round circles in there. Yeah, this is very soft. Not stiff at all. And it's very, very easy to harvest. You simply pull it off. Now, the other thing is a fresh turkey tail should be very, very malleable. It shouldn't be stiff. If it's stiff, it doesn't bend easily at all. Like, see how this easily bends. Now, these are not young. They're very stiff, very hard. If it's not flexible, then it's very old. Now, the thing about mushrooms is when you harvest mushrooms, you're not actually killing the mushroom. Harvesting a mushroom is just like harvesting a raspberry or an apple or a peach. It's the fruit. The, the, the part that you're harvesting is what's called the fruiting body. All the rest, the, 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 the majority of this, the, the body of this turkey tail is inside this log. This is just the fruiting part of it. Which means afterwards, next year, this is gonna, this log is likely gonna grow some more turkey tail because I've left the rest of it in, on the inside. What's on the inside is what's called the mycelia, which look a lot like roots, I guess you could say, but they're very delicate, very, very thin, each one, the, the filaments. Now, this is a very important message to give. You should not harvest any mushrooms or any fungi for, for eating unless you are 100% sure that you've identified it properly. So I'm, I've given you, for, for example, for the turkey tail, I have given you some, some indications of how to identify it. But you need to be 100% sure before you ever harvest anything for your use because there are a great many mushrooms and fungi that are either very toxic, that can be deadly, or that can really mess with your brain. They, they, they have psychoactive uh, components and so on. So you have to be very, very careful. You have to be 100% sure that you have properly identified them if you're going to use them. Now, because turkey tails are so thin, they're very easy to air dry. The important thing about air drying is simply to have it in, a, in an area that is well ventilated. So here's something that we use for drying all of our herbs and, and other things like that. You simply put it on one of these levels. The air flows quite nicely through it. Any type of mesh will do. It could be metal mesh baskets or it could be material mesh. The important thing is to have something that you can place them on, that the air is going to flow through and dry them out. It's preferable not to put them in direct sunlight because that can affect their prop. You don't want to cook your stuff when you're drying it. Now you could also use a dehydrator to dry these, but it's really not necessary. But if it's just too humid in the area where you like to dry your stuff and they won't dry, well, you could use a dehydrator at its lowest setting and then that won't affect the properties of your mushroom. So that's how we dry them. Now, what we do after we've dried them is we make them into a powder. We use the same blender that we use 
to make our flour from our sorghum, for example, that you've seen in, in previous videos. It's a sous meat blender. The more turkey tail you'll have, the better a blender will work. You know, if you just have a few pieces, then maybe they're just going to fly around the outside of your blender and not end up getting blended. So if you have lots, it's better. I suppose if you only had a few pieces, what you could do is mix them in there with some whole grains. And then you'll have that volume and they will get blended up with the whole grains. And then you just use them together. Because that's the thing, once you've got these made into a powder, whether you've mixed them with whole grains or not, what you're gonna be able to do with them is put them into soups. You take that fine turkey tail powder that you've made, it'll thicken your soup, it'll give it a nice mushroomy flavor, and it will make it just delicious, and it'll give it all those properties from the mushroom. You can make tea out of it, you can add them to stews, all these different ways of using them. And I'll show you the powder we make from this stuff. And also, well, we'll make some together. In a little bit, I'll show you how we get these ready for making into a powder. We'll make them into a powder together and we'll use some in a little bit of cooking. So let's go look at some of the diverse examples of how beautiful the turkey tail can be growing on all the different logs and stuff. It's not very white underneath anymore, but still whitish. You can see the round pores, the white outer edge, and the white outer edge on the top part too. The very velvety surface. This is just some moss growing on this. Just showing you how rich and biodiverse the ecosystem is. Reedy wants in on the video. Want some turkey tail, Meaty? Want some turkey tail? As the turkey tail gets older, the pores lose their roundness and become a little elongated. <laughs> Meaty wants the bird's eye view of the turkey tail. All those concentric circles, clearly, clearly different colors. And then the outer edge, much lighter color and lots of indentations on that outer edge. Now, now these are really old, these ones. They used to be white, but these are probably at least a year old, these turkey tails. I'm only starting to harvest them now because I wanted to be sure about all this stuff and I was just too busy to go researching, uh, you know, all sorts of different fungi and mushrooms and so on. But that's the thing. I mentioned about using logs. So you can see this one right here using logs in your garden so that you can grow your mushrooms, grow your turkey tails, grow your pleurotus, grow your pheasant backs, but they're not going to grow right away. You know, and you're not going to know when, where they're going to grow and when and so on. You put the logs in place. That's why it's, you know, if you're using them for many other reasons, then it doesn't really matter when they grow. They'll eventually grow. I'd say give it at least two years though. With any kind of mushroom, if you've got some fresh mushrooms, let's say some fresh turkey tail, let's say you've gone and found it elsewhere, some turkey tail, some pleurotus, some pheasant back. If you've got some and you've got some logs, then you can, you can place those fresh mushrooms with the logs on them, let's say, somehow try and attach them so they don't fall off, so that the spores that are inside them Will eventually inoculate as as you as they say the wood for you simply there i mean they're so microscopic you don't have to like put holes and stuff in them um, inoculating is just a fancy way of saying planting the spores of the mushrooms the spores are these tiny microscopic what you could call seeds but they're what they call the seeds of the of the the fungi in the mushroom family Fungi and mushrooms, they're not plants. So we don't call those seeds, we call them spores. 
and we don't say plant them because they're not plants we say inoculate but it's essentially the same idea you know all life is connected whether you're a fungus whether you're a mammal or any other kind of animal or a plant or a bacteria or a virus we're all related in some way because we're all life that has grown on this planet we're all connected and we need each other the idea here is use your logs keep them in place use them to build your soil to protect your gardens to attract uh, different wildlife and eventually you'll get some mushrooms from them too this is another log that we placed here just to be able to sit down and and rest we got them all over the place just different places where we can sit watch nature watch the gardens watch what's going on and uh and eventually we we got these turkey tails that have grown on them little fuzzy top turkey tail mushrooms they'll feed you and they'll feed your food forest i was just getting up and i found some more at the base of this log right here right here this piece has come off with some of the bark you can see those little pores there the little round pores this is still white it's not totally white because it's a little bit old we're late in the season but this is turkey tail very nice if you'd like to see more video images of turkey tail harvests and all their colors and shapes check out the end of the video during the music portion and you'll see a lot more this piece here i just cut eh, it's a little whiter the stuff that i harvested in the summer that i'm going to show you in the kitchen that we dried up it was all nice and fresh talking to you about permaculture earlier this wood here is a whole bunch of manitoba maple or box elders another way of calling it logs we had laying down we laid down here to hold all those wood chips in place and that was when we were having major flood problems with this area and so these logs helped us hold these wood chips in place so that the, when the when the the flood waters came along this side our wood chips wouldn't float away but in the meantime we've solved that problem you can see other videos about that so initially this wood served as helping to prevent erosion and control flooding and now this wood is feeding us and giving us some nice medicinal mushrooms so here i was just showing you close-ups of these mushrooms on this little box elder log here some really nice turkey tail we've got so much turkey tail all over the place because we like to use logs for all sorts of different purposes to create habitat for frogs toads snakes solitary bees that are great pollinators and so many other different insects and pollinators we also like to use logs to build the soil to hold wood chips back to hold the different mixes of compost in in our gardens and stuff we surround our gardens with these logs we invite the frogs and toads into our gardens. We use the logs to build soil elsewhere to help uh, prevent erosion and to simply build the soil. And then an additional benefit to using these logs is they feed us. They give us turkey tail mushrooms. Sometimes our logs also give us pleurotus mushrooms and sometimes they give us pheasant back mushrooms. Can't wait to show you how we use these inside. Four years ago this was a freshly cut log from a dead tree. Now it is covered in turkey tail. We used these logs to surround our garden in order to give habitat for frogs and toads and also to, just because it looked good, frame our garden with it. And here's the added benefit. So here is the stash of turkey tail that I'm going to work with today. 
make a powder out of it. Use some really pretty pieces here. Now, as you can see, when I picked these, the underside was still very white. You can see the little round pores under there. On this piece, for example, this is a piece of bark. I'm gonna have to remove this when I process these mushrooms because I don't want us to be eating bark. I'm not sure that would be such a great idea. Now, what it would have been a better idea to remove that bark before bringing these in to dry, but I just loved how this looked. Here's another one. The bark on the bottom I'm gonna have to remove. I'm just going to pull the mushrooms off like I, I did outside. Another piece with a little bit of bark on it. To me it looks a bit like coral. These are just beautiful. Seems almost a shame to, to eat them. Here's how I'm going to take off the wood. Just going to pull pieces. This comes off just like outside. It's a little bit stiffer. It's a little bit harder. There it is. There's the, the initial piece of wood. Got pretty well most of the mushroom off of there. That's what's left. That's coming off easily. So I recommend if, uh, if you got pieces of bark on them, you know, like this one, pull, pull the bark off before you start drying it. It'll be a lot easier when they're still fresh. Now I'm just going to pull the rest of these apart, and the pieces should be small enough for the blender. I'll remove this one, save it. Smell the mushrooms. All these pieces that have a little bark on it, I'm just gonna put these back outside. So this is what I have so far in my blender and I still have all this left. Suppose I could fit a lot more in here if I cut these up into a smaller pieces. Just gonna stuff that in a little bit. Get it on. Turn it on. Let's have a look. It's uh, warm, very, very warm. There we go. I don't want to cook it, so Let's see how hot that is. Yeah, it's warm. It's not hot though. It's not cooking. It's just warm. So this has been at about three minutes on high, and these have. This isn't quite a powder, but it's they're very, very small pieces now. This is very hot, and so before putting this away in a, any kind of jar, you want to make sure that it cools completely, because otherwise you'll have moisture. Very light and fluffy. Spread this around this bowl to let it cool down, and I'm going to make some more. This was some that Magali made last week and she told me she put it six minutes on high. This is a real powder. However, when she saw this and she saw that it was only three minutes, she said this is absolutely fine. And so now I'm going to try two minutes on high to see how that comes out. So here's the second batch. Keep your hand on top and then turn it on to high for two minutes. Two minutes was just fine. 
I'm thinking we could have done less than two minutes. This is gonna go a long way. This is very nutrient dense. These ones are what I haven't used yet. I'm gonna put them into a jar for making into a powder later. So here's today's batch. Nice and fluffy compared to the other batch, which is also nice and fluffy. So two minutes is enough, but next time I might even try one minute. So this is a vegetable tomato sauce that Magali used with some salmon yesterday. It was very delicious. So it's got a bit of salmon, sort of salmon flavor in there as well. And so I'm just heating this up. I'll just add some of the turkey tail right here. There's about maybe a cup here of sauce. Not that much, just leftovers. But let's make these leftovers more significant. I'm gonna add maybe two, two big tablespoons of, of the turkey tail. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna let this thing warm up first. You know, I don't want the, the turkey tail to be in here while it's warming up because then it's gonna, I, as far as I'm concerned, the turkey tail is gonna cook too much. Whenever you're preparing food that is particularly good for its medicinal properties or any of those properties, uh, you know, health, health benefits, good for you when it's good for you. You don't want to overcook it. Just a light cooking is usually enough to bring those, you know, for instance, let's talk about spinach. You don't want to overcook spinach. You want to just steam it. When you steam your spinach, that's when you're going to get your properties. Raw spinach doesn't really give you anything. You'd actually have to cook your spinach, but you don't want to overcook it. Steaming it just a little bit lightly is just enough. It's an example. So same thing with the turkey tail. This is this uh, sauce now is almost boiling, and then when it starts uh, when it starts to boil, I'm gonna I'm gonna take it off the heat or I'm gonna turn off the heat, and then I'm just gonna throw the turkey tail in there and just let it lightly cook as the sauce cools down. That will be plenty. You know, I think that's enough. That's really, that's really hot. Look at it steaming. So let's take my turkey tail. Heaping tablespoon. We'll start with one. Turn off the heat. Take this off the heat because there's plenty of heat in there. I'll put another another tablespoon in there maybe not heaping just a regular one there we go mix that in looks good smells good smells like mushroom let's try this so there's a little bit of turkey tail in there don't want to burn my tongue can't taste anything after as you burn your tongue taste the mushroom there's still the salmon flavor in there but now it's salmon with mushroom it's really good I think I'll put some more all right Let's taste this now this was only in there for a few seconds now I can see it more Looks like chicken. Looks like, you know, like chicken that you've pulled. Very nice. Now, you can taste the mushroom, but the salmon has a really strong flavor. So if you wanna just have the, just the, that mushroom flavor, then maybe for instance, if this was just a straight tomato sauce, it would, probably would have been better because then I would have been able to taste that mushroom even more. Any kind of a liquid sauce that you're cooking. If the flavor is subtle, you'll taste the mushroom more. If the flavor is strong, then you'll taste the mushroom less. A recent meal we had, Magali stir fried some cabbage that she had thinly sliced and put some turkey tail in there. And you could really taste the mushroom. There you go. Turkey tail mushroom. Just leave your logs, 
lying around your garden. Surround your garden with them. Leave those logs for the frogs and the bees and all the other insects and for the soil. And eventually, if they're hardwood logs, you'll get turkey tail mushrooms too. You can also use this to make tea. This is a broccoli and cauliflower gratin. That means there's cheese melted over top of it with a bechamel sauce made with cream, a little bit of white flour, some tomato, and the turkey tail powder that I'd made today. The bechamel sauce is put over top of the broccoli and the cauliflower along with the cheese, and then it's all baked in the oven. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful and you learned something from it. If you enjoyed the video, then please share it with your friends. Don't forget to hit that like button. Drop a comment, a question. I love to read your comments and uh, respond to your questions and also to your comments. It's a great way to build community. And uh, you can also have discussions with each other on these comments. It's, uh, it's quite nice. I also learn a great deal from a lot of you in our comments. So it's really, really nice. And, if, and also, if you haven't done so yet, then please uh, subscribe. Support what we do here just by subscribing. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great week, and we will see you next time. between life.
pieces here. Right down here. Yeah, they, they really hold on tight. That's a lot wider. There you go. Now, without my glasses, I don't see those pores. But, I can kind of make them out a little. Look at those beautiful colors.